Torelli and welcome to the third and final chapter of this series on bet sizing. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to check out my first two videos where we covered bet sizing strategy in general and then small bet sizing. Today's video is going to be on big bet sizing and over betting and I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel because this week for the hand of the day, I'm going to do a special hand of the day episode where we discuss over betting and where an awesome epic over bet is used. And I'll give you a little teaser, uh, Phil Ivey's gonna be in the video as well. So be sure to check that out this Thursday uh, right here on my channel. Awesome hand between Dario San Martino and Phil Ivey. This hand so in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies to understand big bet sizes and over betting, when to use them from a strategic and a game theory standpoint and how to implement them into your game to win more money and take advantage of your opponents. So the first thing to understand is when to use overbetting from a game theory standpoint. This is really important because it helps you have a foundation for understanding conceptually when the best time is to use big bet sizing. You want to be able to have yourself be in a situation where you can have a really, really strong hand based on how you played the hand and your opponent can't have a really strong hand based on how he played the hand. So pros like to call this term a situation where your opponent's range is capped. And by capped, we mean that the best hand he could have is a mediocre hand or a bluff catcher. He can't really have the nuts. A common situation where you find yourself in this spot is when you bet the flop, your opponent calls, and the turn goes check, check. In this situation, when you're out of position on the river, you know that because your opponent checked the turn, he can't really have a very big hand. He checked in position after he called a bet on the flop. Generally, in situations like this, your opponent's always gonna bet a very, very strong hand in this situation. So you can determine most of the time that this is a situation where your opponent's range is essentially capped because if he had a really, really strong hand, he would have bet the turn or he would have raised you on the flop. Again, this is very player dependent and of course this is a really generic example. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But the key thing to keep in mind here is the concept. So what you have to remember is anytime that your opponent plays a hand where you know that he would have played the hand differently if he had the nuts, you could assume that his range is capped and he can't really have an epic strong hand. When you play the hand in a way that still allows you to have the nuts, meaning that you would play the hand the exact same if you had a monster, this is a time when your range isn't capped. So you want both of these things going in your favor. You want you to be able to have the nuts based on how you played the hand or a really, really strong hand. And you want your opponent not to be able to have a really, really strong hand. This is a great time from a game theory standpoint to make a big bet or an over bet. Of course, you're representing a strong hand. Your opponent is representing a mediocre hand or a bluff catcher. And so this is a great time to apply maximum pressure regardless of your holding. Now that you have an idea of when to use big bet sizing from a game theory standpoint, I'd like to talk to you about specific situations of when to use big bet sizing when you're bluffing and when to use big bet sizing when you're value betting. First, let's discuss bluffing. A great time to use a big bet size when you're bluffing, you want to have a few things going in your favor. One is that you want your opponent to perceive your big bet size as strength. This is generally against ABC opponents who evaluate they, they correlate directly the size of a bet with the strength of your hand. Against these types of players, it's great to use a big bet size as a bluff because they're likely to give you credit for a lot of strength. Of course, the opposite situation is when you have a value betting hand against these types of players, you don't want to bet so big because they're likely to fold. So anytime you find yourself in that situation versus that type of opponent, it's great to use a big bet size or an over bet size uh, to get them to fold when you are incredibly bluffing. So the second thing you want to have going in your favor when bluffing is you want your opponent to be really afraid of the size of the game and you want him to be concerned about the amount of money he's playing with. So you could get a feel for these types of players and you've all played with them before when they're actually playing outside their comfort zone. A lot of players don't like to call all in bets and they don't like to call big bets with mediocre hands. So if you remember the situation we talked about before when you think your opponent can't have a really strong hand, if he's also the type of player that doesn't like to call big bets or doesn't like to feel maybe uh, concerned at the table about what other people think about him, he doesn't really like to risk all his chips, it's a great time to use a big bet size because even if he thinks you might be bluffing, some people just don't have it in them to pull the trigger with a marginal hand. Against these types of players and in these situations, it's a great time to use a big bet size as a bluff. Now let's talk about when to use big bet sizing for value. There are times when your range will be polarized. 
meaning that you will either have the absolute nuts based on how you played the hand, or you will have absolutely nothing. If your opponent is aware of this, uh, it's a great time to use a big bet size when you have a value betting hand, simply because your opponent is likely to perceive your big bet size as a bluff. He's likely to think that you're trying to buy the pot, or maybe he's egotistical, maybe he just likes to be the hero, and he likes to give himself an opportunity to make a hero call with a big, big bet. It's a challenge to him, and he feels like you know, he wants to prove himself by making a huge hero call in a big pot. Against these types of opponents, and in this specific situation, uh, it's a great time to use a big bet size as a, a time to get maximum value. So a lot of times you're in a spot where when you bet huge, you're not really representing a value betting hand. Most of the time when you bet huge or over bet the pot, most players are either representing the absolute nuts or they're representing nothing. And so a lot of times players will hero call in this spot because it's much more likely you have a bluff. So what I like to do and what I encourage you to do to make yourself much tougher to play against is to incorporate strong value betting hands into your big bet sizing or over bet sizing uh, and to not only be able to have the nuts or nothing. When you're only having the nuts or nothing when you over bet the pot or bet huge, you make yourself way too easy to play against and your opponents could call you successfully and pick off your bluffs too often. So what I like to do is incorporate hands that I think are better than my opponent's hand, even if I'm risking more money, I like to value bet on the bigger side or even on over bet side to balance my range and throw my opponents off so they really never know what I have. I find that, that works really, really well, and I encourage you guys to try it out in spots that work for you. Again, always keep in mind the foundational aspect of this video. Times when you feel like you can have a really strong hand and your opponent's range is capped, meaning the best hand he could have is a mediocre one. That's a great time to overbet, regardless of whether you are bluffing or value betting. I encourage you to use your opponents and what you know about them and their psychology, how they think about the game, and what they are likely to perceive your overbet to mean to determine whether it's better to use an overbet versus them when you're bluffing or whether it's better to use an overbet versus them when you're value betting. Again, uh, aside from the game theory aspect, a lot of your specific decision will come down to your opponent's psychology and what he's going to think about your bet sizing. Here's a quick fact to keep in mind before you go. To make a bet work. If you're going to bet the size of the pot, your bet has to work 50% of the time. So if you're value betting and you bet the size of the pot, you want your opponent to fold more than 50% of the time for your bet to be profitable. Of course, if you're betting for value, you want your opponent to call more than 50% of the time. Otherwise, you're not going to get max value for your hand. And if you bet 2x the pot, so if, for example, the pot's 100 and you bet 200, Instead of your bet needing to work 50% of the time, your bet now needs to work two thirds of the time or 67% of the time in order for it to be profitable. So if you're gonna bet two X the pot on a bluff, you better be damn sure your opponent's gonna fold because he needs to fold 67% of the time for your bet to be profitable. So use these numbers to determine whether it's better to bet the size of the pot or two X the pot or somewhere in between about, and figure out which is gonna work best for you based on how likely you think your opponent is to fold to your given bet size. All right, that's it for the video on overbetting. Be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. I have an awesome video coming out this week on Thursday uh, with Phil Ivey about an awesome overbet he used, and I break down all his analysis of what I think he's doing in the hand and how to give you guys more insights into how to use overbetting and to make the most money in your game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.